Welcome to our admission talk for the BF Designers Program, and I am the program coordinator, Professor Jessica Run, or you can simply call me Jessica. Well, and today we are going to get started with a thematic talk on metabolizing science teachers, which will then be followed by my sharing of some admission tips with you, and then we will have a student sharing of his learning experience in our program. And last but not least, we are going to have a Q&A session. So for the thematic talk, let's get started. I would like to ask you to describe a good science teacher simply by using keywords with you. You don't need to give me long, long sentences or write me a long, long paragraph about describing a good science teacher. So if you're asked to describe a good science teacher, what would be the keywords for doing that? In case you have nothing to get started with, maybe you can recall your memory about your learning experience in science. Maybe you have your favorite science teacher at your secondary school. You have some keywords. Inspiring. Inspiring. Very good. A good science teacher can be inspiring. What else? Would you like to add on? Leading. Yes. Have some kind of leadership. Like they need to be patient. They need to be patient, right? Being a teacher, well, you have to be very patient. A good teacher, that's what I'm talking about. And passion, passion right? With a passion in teaching. And in this case, in teaching science. Logical? Logical. Logical, right. Illogical, which maybe will may mark the difference between science teacher and any other teacher, perhaps. If a picture is worth a thousand words, a metaphor is worth a thousand pictures. That is why instead of using words, keywords to describe a good science teacher, it would be even better if we can use a metaphor to describe a science teacher, a good science teacher. And what's meant by metaphor? Metaphor, it means to carry across. It is a tool or a vehicle for externalizing one's understanding about a situation based on prior experience. Well, which may sound quite abstract, and let me give you some concrete examples by sharing this research with you. Here is a research study with a group of student teachers. And the student teachers are asked to use digital photography to capture their metaphor of teaching. And well, here are well, some of the pictures. And let's get started with this one on the left hand side. A pot of flowers. What is that? A pot of flowers as a metaphor. Pot of flower by giving it some water, some sunshine to make sure that it will grow. And for this one on the right hand side, anyone would like to give it a try? A burning candle. Keep the student on their way during their learning. Very good. Leave the students on their way on their learning. Right. So that could be one interpretation. And I got students saying that, oh, a burning candle, that is to burn oneself and to sacrifice herself or himself so as to help the students. So that could be another interpretation of this picture. Well, and in this case, a teacher is a light in the dark, right? Leading the students, showing them the right direction. And here are some more examples of metaphors for a teacher. A teacher is a gardener, more or less similar to being a planter, to take care of the plants, to take care of the students in this case. A juggler, being able to multitask with a lot of tasks or multiple tasks to manage. A second parent, to take care of your students as if they were your children. A tour guide, okay? In this case, the students would be your tourists. 
So it will be your responsibility to introduce every spot that well, you all go to. Well, a superhero to save the students, a compass to show students the direction, a salesman aiming to satisfy customers. So in this case, the teacher uh, is a salesman and the students are customers. And a conductor leading an orchestra, okay? So it shows some kind of leadership. I asked them to not only to describe a good science teacher, but also to use a metaphor to represent what a good science teacher should be. And here are some of the responses. A lifeguard. Science teacher is like a lifeguard because he has to be responsible to students who stay alert in various experiments. So one of the differences between science and other non-science subjects is that for science, it involves doing lab practicals. And it is always the foremost priority to ensure students' safety. So for this student teacher, he or she sees himself or herself as a lifeguard, protecting the students, ensuring their safety. And other response, a magician in this case, Science teacher is like a magician, unveiling the mysterious and intriguing nature of science to the audience who are their students. Every time when the teacher conducts an experiment, it is like performing a magic show. He or she amazes the students by showing a color change or detecting a special smell, just like a magician surprises the crowd with an unbelievable magic. In this case, uh, I can tell that uh, the student, uh, student teacher, probably sees himself or herself as a as a kind of entertainer to entertain the audience, and the audience would be the students. Well, and in this case, it also uh, this metaphor also marks the difference between science teacher and a non-science teacher by saying that oh, doing experiment or doing demonstration at a laboratory. Is like performing a magic show. And for some other student teachers, well, they use or they borrow scientific principles or jargons as the metaphor for science teacher. Here is an example a strand of DNA. Science teacher is like a strand of DNA because he inculcates useful science knowledge to his students and passes on the wisdom of science from the older generation. Well, and in this case, somehow I can tell that uh, the student teacher probably sees himself as a deliverer of knowledge, passing the knowledge well, from like one generation to the next generation. Well, and uh, these metaphors are from our year one students, and these metaphors can be evolving. By the time when they're in year five, they may come up with a very different metaphor. Friction. Science teacher is like friction. A good science teacher is friction that is useful. For example, the friction between the shoes and floor makes us able to move forward, which means a good science teacher can help students make improvements and make a step further. If lacking in this kind of friction, we may sleep and not able to move. And what I like about this metaphor, friction, is that it differentiates between good science teacher and bad science teacher. However, a bad science teacher is the friction that makes students difficult to get forward, such as compressing students' creativity and imagination. And I would like to do to reflect upon these questions. What is your metaphor representing science teachers? If you are asked to come up with a metaphor to represent what a good science teacher should be, what would it be and why? Does it distinguish science teachers from teachers of other subjects? Does it distinguish good science teachers from any science teachers? You don't need to answer all these questions at this very moment. Take your time. Okay. And you can well come back to these questions 
later on, say in the coming months, before we may probably meet again in September, if we get enrolled in this program, and then we can further discuss all these questions in our UN course. And we would like our students to become reactive practitioners by the time when they graduate. That is because we do not learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience. So there is a common saying that all oh, practices of times or millions of times without reflection. It will be hard for one to get improvement in teaching. So that is why it is very important for a teacher, a good, a good teacher or a good science teacher to reflect on his or her own teaching all the time. So that comes to the end of the thematic talk. And now I would like to share with you some admission tips. And you can get the information from the website and based on the admissions in the year 2023, the median score is 42, and this is our scoring formula. And some subjects would carry a higher weighting, such as biology, chemistry, integrated science, maths, extended art, one and two, module one and or two, and physics. And from 2020 to 21, Hong Kong you adopted a new scoring system by giving bonus points to students achieving level five, five star, or five star star in the HKDSC subjects. And under the HKD scoring system, the level to score conversion are as follows. So for level five, it corresponds to a score of 5.5. Where for five star, it corresponds to a score of seven. And for five star star, it corresponds to a score of 8.5. And if you like, uh, you can use this QR code to get access to the information provided. Or you can take a photo for the link here. Okay, either way it will work. Can you hear me now? Here are some strategies to get into our program. Well, it is only applicants who have put the program as their band A, that is the top three choices in Jupiter's choice will be favorably considered. Must take and obtain level three or above in one of the following science elective subjects. It could be biology, chemistry, physics, combined science, or integrated science. Achieve good results in maths and English language would lead to higher admission score. Have a competitive edge for candidates studying more science elective subjects and M1, M2 because they carry more weighting and achieving good results in these subjects. Consider best subjects in years uh, 2023 and 2024 only. Prior to that, that is, say, for example, results in 2022, we are not going to consider. No interview except for special cases, really, really special cases, which we wish to get more information. And there may be some myths about our program, and I would like to take this chance to clarify the myths. So I can take BFB science as a stepping stone and transfer to B science or other programs in year two. And uh, the answer to this is no, that is not true. And there is no exit point for BFB science program. And say, for example, well, would it be possible for our student 
go to say uh, complete year four and then say that, oh, I'm going to graduate with a single science degree. That won't be the case. It won't be possible because there won't be any exit point for our program. Once you're admitted to our program, we expect you to finish It's not quite true because BFB science program does not offer a major in mathematics. But we prepare our student teachers to teach science at secondary schools here in Hong Kong or, or internationally or but, uh, physically. Well, we target our, our student teachers well, to become a teacher, a science teacher here in Hong Kong. That would be the main target. Well, the program aims to train qualified teachers in science subjects in Hong Kong secondary schools. Whether graduates can be recruited as a math teacher, they would be subject to the contractual agreement between graduates and their pros prospective employers, that is the school. Students are advised to declare minor in mathematics and take more math electives to enrich their knowledge during the five year of study and add colors to their portfolios if they're really interested in math. Well, and now I would like to pass the floor to our student, year five student, Derek Cho, and he's going to share with all of you his experience here in our program. First, I want to thank Professor Lam and the faculty for offering this opportunity for me to reflect on this five years experience. So I would like to recap this word reflect because this as a summary for myself and also what have I done in these five years. Well, let's start with some of the things that I've accomplished in the university. So every student starts with studying, but I'm also living in a hall, uh, complete some part-time jobs, and also I become an executive committee member at Exco in the university. So at Hong Kong, you luckily I don't only study, but I also enrich myself in different perspectives. So let's start with study. So the BNBSC consists of two programs at uh, two degrees. So typically one degree costs you four years, but you have two degrees in five years. So it saves you around three years. So it seems to be you know, a benefit. Yeah, it is. But in another way, it also means that you have a hectic your life, which means that you have a lot of coursework. This is my timetable in year three of my study. So you can see, it's like a secondary school student, you know, a full, a full pack of courses and, and lectures consist. Well, some of them are consist to be science courses. So in science, we have lectures, but more importantly, I major in chemistry. So chemistry is an experiment focused discipline. So you see the long bars here, they are the laboratories that go for my experiments. So you see, if you take this discipline and you take these degrees, please be prepared, please be prepared that you will have a packed timetable that equips you both science knowledge on science background and also in the teaching as a BS students. So we offer different kinds of majors, physics, chemistry, in biology, uh, they separate into more disciplines. So let's say biochemistry, biological science, ecology and biodiversity, and molecular biology and biotechnologies. So if you wish to study in this program, you may take a look in this major, what is the focus of this major? So I'm a major in chemistry, so I can only tell you information in chemistry. But if you're looking into other majors, I think you have to go through this information yourself. And these are very essential, whether you would take which majors. So in the BSC, we have a relatively very small cohort compared to all other degrees in Hong Kong. So we have a class of around 20, perhaps a bit less. So we have a very small class size, and that's why our bond is quite strong, because we spent all five years together. So these are my friends in the same cohort. We spent our lecture together, and also we have, our, we have our lecture party. So we enjoy our lectures and also enjoy our bond between each other. In terms of science part, we do that board, right? So in university, we, we dig more deeply into the science principle. 
So some apparatus or some reactions that you may not encounter in the secondary school will be encountered in a university. So you are, you are needed to experience a great challenge because all science principles, they are not easy. I would say they are, they are very, they require you a long time of hard work in really going through these concepts. And I also earn friendship So we spend 20 something hours together. Meanwhile, some of my friends in biology kindly share these photos to me. They do that section. And for those who are major in ecology or even biodiversity, they would do field trips. They will really go out to have a field trip on how the habitats interact with. My pictures showing my education part in my study. So on the right side, this will be the two that I share my courses with other PGDE students as an elective. So uh, these are the one course on general studies. So it seems that general study is not exactly the same with science. Then why do I take this course? It's because in this program, although we may not have a very flexible curriculum, we do have some free electives which allows you to enrich yourself. Just like what Professor Leung said, you may declare a minor in mathematics. I also go for some education electives that enrich yourself. Well, more importantly, we do practicums in Chinese Chinese. So we don't only study, but we also do a practice in secondary school. So this is the picture. These two are the pictures that I go on a community-based practicum, which I spend around 1.5 hours but students in, in, this, in the context of non-Chinese speaking students. So in that school, most of the students are non-Chinese speaking. And at that time, I'm delivering a STEM lesson to them. So it is a challenge for me. I have done this in my second year, which at the time I may not be fully able to really present my ideas in chemistry, uh, my ideas in English. So this is a challenge for me, but after five years of practice, I'll say I'm confident to do so. So it is my reflection that, okay, I really improve when I spend 10 minutes. And we also have a group of telecom teachers together. We spend 10 weeks in two different, we spend 10 weeks in one, one school, and we, in total, we have two telecom in this program. So in total of 20 weeks, you will spend in a local school teaching science concept according to your, according to your disciplines. So 10 weeks really worth a lot. So you can experience as a typical teacher, you really face difficulty in managing classrooms. So students are too excited. Wow, that's all glassware, those apparatus. But at the meantime, you have to make sure safety is the top priority. You also manage students' assignments, whether they submit their homework on time or whether they finish their homework to an appropriate quality. What if the students don't do it or even they just copy from others? So these are the questions that I, that I go through and I went through it in my credit card. And this little cute robot is Pepper that I've experienced. So we don't, this is the extra co-curricular uh, activities that I have in Hong Kong U, which we include a inclusive education program in this robot. So not only about education, or not only about science teaching, but we also focus on other parts of education. I've done some part-time, so I don't only focus on studying, but also try to make things more practical. So thanks to this program, give me the opportunity to work in the Hong Kong AGE, the Hong Kong Academy for Gift Education. Perhaps some of you are the members of that academy. So I spent a few times with the gift students. So how can we cater for students with special needs would be one of the focus that I've done in that uh, part time. Not only practically, but also we strike for improvement and further improvement. And that's why I do research. So I'm honored to be the research team in three different projects. 
So we really push beyond our boundaries or on towards learning. So how can we improve learning to a greater extent is also one of our focus. If you wish to really push human knowledge to a further extent, then I would say try to seek more opportunities. I also live in a hall which enrich my soft skills and interpersonal skills. So we have, we, I, I really earned a brotherhood there in my hall. So uh, I would say Hong Kong Youth Hall have a different culture and I'll be great if I don't have it. So uh, we spend a few in karaoke. We also have morning tea in Chinese we call Zhou Cha. So all of these are precious experience that I've learned. So not only we focus on study, but more importantly to a holistic life. What is it on being a teacher? So if teacher have and if the students have any problem, we don't only focus on students' exact problem, but perhaps his relations with others, with the peers, or with I also become an executive committee member, which somehow is a good it is a good experience, but somehow very challenging. It's because I hold activities for my homics. And I also undergo an election in the top governing body of HKU, which leads to give me an experience of education administration. So from different perspectives, as a student, I have A, B, C opinion, but perhaps from the role of university, of administration, we have different opinions. So how can we negotiate and reach a consensus is also learned from this experience. So you see, see the complexity of education, not only in classroom teaching, but also students well-being and also administration. These are all daily work as a teacher, which I may not imagine as a student at the time. So teachers just come over in the classroom doing the, doing the lesson for me. It seems to me the teacher, in fact, a more complicated job, I would say. We also have international engagement. I was lucky that I was invited to the U21 Annual Network Forum that I'm allowed to share my experience and my understanding on AI towards teaching in university. So this is Professor Brian, who is a Nobel Prize laureate in physics. So we come together to discuss with new education policies in university. So how can we, uh, I won't say copy, but take, make reference from other universities to improve our teaching as well in secondary school, how can we learn from each other and reflect from each other to improve our teaching with one key essential quality. If you have such a quality, learn from each other and constantly learn from each other, it would be a very key element to be a good science teacher. So let me wrap up with these four things. But you see, I leave space. Four elements, but you have more, I believe, that you will have more on the list. But the fifth, the sixth, the sixth, the seventh, and so on. So, science education program don't only equip you science and education, but the more is the way that you find. Some of us go for Chinese courses, some of us go for education, mathematics. So, it is just a program and it lets you flexibility. To some extent, some flexibility that allows you to go beyond and try to make your new life as fantastic as you want. And that's my sharing as a student at the BSC. And this concludes my five years. And around a few months later, I will be a teacher in a local school. So although I may not be able to see any of you in the September, but I hope that my professors and lecturers can see you in September, yeah, in the coming September, as our students of education and science. And that's my sharing. Thank you.